Two and a half weeks later, the Apache attacked again. 200 miles east of Tucson and 200 miles south of the Gallinas Mountains, a war party of 300 Chiricahua and Membreño warriors led by Cochise and Mangas Coloradas attacked the mining camps and town of Pinos Altos, the place where Governor Owings was received with honors the year before. Given the size of the attacking force, there is a real possibility that Geronimo participated in this battle, since he was a Chiricahua with military rank, not civilian rank, and he was known to raid with Mangas Coloradas' band, the Chihende. The early morning attack on September 27th caught the town completely by surprise. The first casualties were several miners, trapped partially underground in their workstations when the attackers showed up, firing rifles and arrows. Other miners, who managed to grab their guns, were the first responders to the attack. They held out long enough to give a 15-man squad from the Arizona Guards, led by Captain Thomas Maston, time to rush back to town from their patrol. They were intermittently reinforced by militiamen from Pinos Altos' other company, the Minutemen. The miners and militiamen and the Apache guerrillas fought from medium to long range at first, with the defenders fighting off small waves of skirmishers. Then around noon, the Apache made a full frontal attack on the town, at which the defenders fought hand to hand with the attackers for the longest half hour of their lives. Knowing the Arizonans were losing the battle, Captain Maston called for the militia to muster the one cannon in town. The cannon was really for show, and there were no cannonballs, but there was gunpowder and rocks and scrap metal in town. The cannon was then loaded and fired into the mass of attackers, killing several Apache and wounding many more. That was what finally made the Apache siege fall back. In those frantic final minutes of fighting for Pinos Altos, Captain Thomas Maston was mortally wounded. The 22-year-old militia captain and former Attorney General of Arizona had led his troops to an unlikely victory, but he died of wounds a few days later in Pinos Altos, making him the only member of the provisional government to die in the service of the Confederate States. The Confederacy's gateway to the Pacific Ocean, coveted by Lieutenant Colonel Baylor and President Jefferson Davis, was temporarily slammed shut by a unified Apache nation, one which didn't care whether the white invaders dressed in blue or gray. The residents of Tucson in western Arizona and Pinos Altos in central Arizona were under siege by a hostile enemy, and they were losing the war. Meanwhile.